guys welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here hi my name is Rosie and thank you so much for taking a moment out of your busy day to spend a few moments with me so in today's video I'm so excited we're gonna be working on a sweetheart's day mini album so if you're ready let's get started okay so I've pre-cut and pre-scored all of the pieces that we're gonna need but don't worry I'm gonna go ahead and I will go over each piece with you now just like all other videos all um, products used within this video will be linked down below in the video description so let's go ahead and get our first piece started so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so for the base, we're gonna need a piece of scrapbook paper that's 12 by five and a half, and we need to make a few score marks. So on the 12 and a half, the 12 inch side, we're gonna do a score mark at three, four, nine and a half, and 10 and a half. That's all that we need to do for the base. So let me put this away real quickly get it here okay so let's go ahead just and fold on all our crease marks beautiful so now what you should have is something that looks like this you're gonna notice that there's a gap in the on um, in the middle and that's okay that's what we want so don't be worried so there's our base let's go ahead and grab the next piece that we're gonna need so the first page what we need is a circle that is five and a quarter inches around so I just took a piece of scrapbook paper and I just cut myself a circle again five and a quarter inches and then we just need to fold in half or you can score at two and an eighth that's page one page two we need a page a uh, piece that is eight inches by five and a quarter and we need to score at four so right in the middle that's page two for page three we need a piece that is nine inches by five and a quarter and again we're just gonna fold in half or score at four and a half for page four we need a piece that is nine and a half inches by five and a quarter again fold in half or score at four and three quarters and then the last page is page five we need a piece that is ten and a half inches by five and a quarter fold in half or score at five and a quarter okay so now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna remove all my little post-it notes from each and let's see all we're gonna do is we're gonna nest them right inside of each other so let's see so here's our page one I'm just gonna take my page two nest it in the middle take my page three do the same thing and so forth and then what we're gonna do is we are going to sew all of these pieces let me bring back in our base get rid of my little post-its and what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and sew our pieces to the second score mark. Okay, so let me just kind of give you a visual first, and then I'll show you how we're going to do that. So can you see that? I'm aligning. Here is my first score mark. Here is the second one. We're going to go ahead and thread to the second score mark. Okay, so some of the things, um, let me just move this over just for a moment. So what we're going to need is, I'm thinking that I want to use a pretty pink for the thread. So I grabbed my pink drawer of embroidery floss, so we're going to need that. As well, 
we are going to need some way to thread the embroidery floss through the paper. So it's totally up to you. I have these. Let me show you. I have these threaders that are perfect for working with things like this. I don't do well with having to thread needle, or string, floss, whatever, through a needle. I stink at it, guys. I am no good. So I like these things where you literally can just open it up. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but my fingers basically go right through the middle, put the floss in, close it, and it locks right in place, and you can thread using that. So that's what I'm going to use. Hey, okay, put this back. Okay. I like to put everything back so I'm nice and organized. Okay, let's go ahead now and just pick out a pretty pink. Let's see. Um, do I want a soft pink or do I want one that changes colors? Ooh, maybe a changing color one. I think that might look pretty, right, guys? Ooh, but I do have this nice bright pink. Oh, that's really pretty, too. Oh, I can't decide now. Okay, I'm going to go with the changing colors one because I think that one's going to be really, really pretty. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut myself a little piece of my embroidery floss and I actually because the thread started with the color white I snipped off the white because white's boring I wanted to start at all of the pretty pinks okay so I've gone ahead and done that so that's all ready now what we need to do is get our pages all set and ready inside of our album so I am just bringing in my little tin of my clippies. So let's go ahead and grab a few. Let's see, I'm just going to start off with four and let's see if I need any more. Push these off to the side for a second. Okay, so now I just want to make sure that all of my pages are perfectly aligned with each other to start with and then I'm going to go ahead and just again I'm going to line it up right to the second score mark. Now when I did this I purposely made it just a smidge smaller than the base and then let's go ahead and just secure our pages and I have all of these pretty clips so why not use them right guys? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our next piece. Okay, so I'm going to bring in, let me move this over to the side. I have had this in my stash for such a long time, but it's a We Are Memory Keepers book binding kit. And let me go ahead and just bring in my little owl here. And I'm going to go ahead and make some holes. Now you can certainly just place foam underneath your paper and just punch holes. Do whatever, you know, whatever you have handy in your stash is perfectly fine. I'm bringing this in only because I have it and I really am making a concerted effort this year to use what I have in my stash. So that's the only reason why I'm using it, guys. Um, I have it, so why not use it? Okay, just I want to make sure that I have the right distance, top and bottom, for my holes. All right, so I'm just going to make my holes now. Okay, let's go ahead and just put this back. Okay, now that I have my holes done, I can release it from my book binding base. I love this thing. I really should use it more, um, and I'm so glad that I'm bringing it out in today's project because I have been meaning to come back to this 
Um, you can see that I've used it quite a bit in the past by my poor packaging. Yes, I do keep my packaging um, because I like to keep it kind of nice. And in case I need to look at that. Okay, so I have that. Let's get that out of the way. Let's move my little case over okay so now we have all of our holes so what i thought would be cute and in my mind it looks cute let's see how it works out i thought it might be cute to add some different kind of little accessories to the saddle stitch that we're going to be doing so i in my ocd mind have to kind of lay it out so that i know it's perfectly spaced throughout so I have myself a little cheat sheet of what I'm thinking I want to do. So I have these um, little short haired gold rimmed tassels in all different colors. I've had these in my stash for oh my goodness guys like years and years. I do use these quite often um, but I have so many that I thought that this was a perfect um, project to utilize them. So I picked out four different colors kind of um, looking at them kind of staged here. So I have the four different colors and then I found this one here that I thought was really cute. It came in this Park Lane package that I had um, for a while and in it, it has this tassel as well as these two charms, these kind of like tag charms. So I said, well, you know, let's see how we can possibly use them. And then, oh my goodness, guys, look at how sweet this little lamb is. I, I know it, it may look a little babyish, but I don't care. I absolutely think it's adorable between the gold, the pink, and the white. So I thought that that would be a cute little kind of topper charm. I just added some gold rings at the top. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking I want to do. Now just be mindful, this may change. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit so that it doesn't take forever. So let's get started.
So now we have our album all pretty much done as far as the bass is concerned. Now let's go ahead and place some different elements within our pages. So, so what you're going to need for that are, now I have cut myself two. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using um, both. But definitely one. I've done the same to the other elements. I've created two just in case I wanted to place them in. So what we're going to need is a piece of scrapbook paper that's four by ten and three quarters. And on the four inch side, we're going to score at a half an inch and three and a half inches, basically a half inch on both sides. And then on the 10 and 3 quarter inch side, we're going to score at 2 and at 6 and a half. So those are the scores that we need to do. Let's go ahead and just fold all of our score marks. The 2 and a half inch section, I apologize, let's put it at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just cut the two panel pieces. So let me show you and I think it's going to be a little bit more clearer. Sorry if I confused anyone. Okay, so we have our two and a half inch section there, right? We want to remove the two long panels and that's going to leave just one. Do that to the other side as well. Okay, so now we have something that looks like this. Let's go ahead and just angle our panel just like this. Okay, and then one more. Let's see, I'll do it this way. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all of our garbage. Let's grab my trash can. Okay. So now you have something that looks like this, right? So we angle cut. What we want to do is we are going to essentially bring it up. And then I've left a little bit here between the flap and our pocket just so that it doesn't bump right up against that crease. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add a little thumb notch here to make it easier to take out anything that we put in. Okay, so essentially we have this now. Now I'm going to go ahead and just angle my flap corners. You can do this if you want or you can skip this part if you want. Okay, so now before we close this up, you need to decide how you want the flap to close. You can either use a little foam dot and that'll hold it closed or you can do with some string. I think this time I'm just going to use a little foam piece so I can go ahead and close up my two sides. However, if you want to do a string piece, you want to add your hole in string prior to closing the sides. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and just use some foam, let's see, a foam dot. Okay. Okay, just match my edges. So now our pocket is all done. There we go. And I'm just going to bring in my little foam dot. And I will use that as my closure. So let me take off the paper backing. 
and there we go. So now that is essentially just closed like that. So I think I'm going to do that for this one. Okay, so I have those two. Let's go ahead and set these two aside. Now we're going to make a couple of library pockets. So what we're going to need for that are um, a piece of scrapbook paper that is five by eight and a half. And on the five inch side, we're just going to score at a half an inch and four and a half, essentially a half inch on both sides. Then we'll turn it and on the eight and a half inch side, we're going to score at five. So folding and creasing on both sides. So we're going to cut away on one side, one, one um, end of the panels. We have the smaller panel and the larger panel. We're going to cut away the side panels on the larger end. So let's go ahead just and do that super quickly. Okay, so what you should be left with is something that looks like this. We have our smaller end in our bigger panel. Now let's go ahead and just add our little thumb notch. Okay, and then if you want, I'm going to go ahead and just corner round my larger panel just to soften the edges a little bit. Okay, and then now if we close it, we have our pocket. So let's go ahead and use some adhesive. Of course, you know me, I'm using my reptile glue. Okay, so now we have our library pockets that we can include in our mini album. Let's okay, for our next element, I thought that we could make a couple of envelopes. Uh, now, because my envelope punch board, sadly, guys, is broken, let me show you. Um, this is the regular size, not the mini, but the regular size. Um, the whole thing came undone. So I didn't want to have to do this on the video with you because it would be a pain. I basically, every time I punch, I have to take it off, re-put in my paper, put this back in. It's a pain. I love my punch board. I'm so sad that it's broken, but this is the one that I'm using. So again, the We Are Memory Keepers, um, the larger size envelope punch board. And I'm using the um, scrapbook paper that is six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And I scored and punched at three and a half. So let's go ahead and fold and crease on all of our score marks. And then now you can either use dry or liquid glue. I'm going to go ahead and use my reptile glue. So just doing a mock close. Okay, and I'm just going to close this up. Okay, make sure it adheres really well. Okay, so there is one of our envelopes. Let's do the exact same thing. Now, because this has a pattern, I just want to make sure that I am closing the right way. Okay. Okay, so there are our two envelopes. So now we have those all ready to be used. Okay, for the closure, I thought that it might be cute to use eyelets and some ribbon. So let's go ahead and take out what I had separated. Okay, and I'm going to be using little green flowers. I don't know if you can see that green flowers as my closure and I picked out this soft pink ribbon. So I'm going to be using the 3 16 of an inch hole puncher and I'm just going to make my holes. Let's see, I'm going to hold this just right here. Let's see, right about, right about there. 
if I'm a little bit off, that's okay, but I think I've got it pretty even. Let's see here. Right. Right there. Okay. All right. So now we have that. Let's go ahead and place in our eyelets. There's one. Let's get the other side. Okay, so I've already done that one. Let's go ahead and do this one as well. Okay, so now we have our eyelets. I'm going to go ahead and work on making it all cutesy cutesy and then I'll come back. Okay, so I am done decorating and I went a little bit all frou-frou. <laughs> I wanted it to be super, super pretty. So let me kind of show you what I've done. So we have, first off, we have our different tassels that are hanging down. How sweet is that little lamb? Oh, I absolutely love that. So we have that on the side. And then I added some ruffle trim all over the cover. And then for the closure, I added some pink ribbon as well as some white eyelash trim. And then I added some different colored um, buttons to, let me see if I can move these around so you can see them a little bit better. There we go. Turn this around this one. Okay, so then I added some different colored buttons to the bottom of one side of the eyelash trim. So I have that instead of like a little dangle, although I may still go back and do a dangle. I keep going back and forth on that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just open this up, and I'll remove it from one side. I love this eyelash trim. Okay, so then I went through, and then I just minimally decorated each of the pages. So let me show you kind of what I've done. So I've included throughout everything a mixture of regular stickers, translucent stickers, um, thickers. So I just kind of grabbed anything and everything in my stash with kind of like the similar color scheme that I wanted to go with. And then I just did a hodgepodge and I think it came out absolutely beautiful. So here I've just added that added a little girl going shopping because who doesn't need to go shopping although truth be told I'm trying to minimize that so okay I'll leave it at that <laughs> um, here I just added a regular sticker and then I included three um, flowers here's a translucent sticker and then here I just added a glitter scalloped border as well as a thicker and then here I just added a simple chipboard sticker as well as here. Oh, I love the colors on this one. Another chipboard sticker here, added a border and layered on top some flowers. Little banner, another sticker, another glitter sticker here, another sticker there. Just a chevron glitter sticker there, a little banner. Another sticker here with lines so that I can write to the recipient if I want. A nice rosette with a layered um, paper scallop circle. And then a gold heart. I have a couple of stickers here. And then we come to the back and then we have our library pocket with a couple of stickers. Now for the cover on both the left and right hand side, I added some pink rickrack trim just to kind of decorate the edge of the gatefold opening. Doesn't that look pretty? And I did not do anything to the back, I just let the paper, the soft pink, kind of speak for itself. Now you can tell that this is somewhat 
thick. I mean, you know, I, of course, I use thickers. I use chipboard stickers throughout, so that's going to add to the depth, but I still have tons of room to add, say, anything else that I want to include to the recipient. Lots of envelopes, library pockets, um, and different coin pockets all throughout. So just a, a great, great way to send a little package to that someone that you're thinking about. And instead of just sending them, you know, a little box full of goodies, why not place it in something that's absolutely beautiful, that's just as fun for them to open as well. Once they're done with their little goodies, they still have a nice package to hold on to. I love this, love this, love this. I love the colors. It just see, it's just so, it's just so soft and pink. Absolutely love this little project. All right, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you so much. Your support goes an awful long way in helping my channel out. All right, guys, until the next time, stay safe, be kind, and keep it creative.